Welcome to Bible Study with Hans and Dan. It is Wednesday, uh, and it's a little bit cloudy outside, but hope you are having a good day and had a, have had a good week. Um, we obviously didn't do a Monday uh, broadcast because of Memorial Day, and hope you were able to uh, to remember the significance of that day in our in our nation's history, but also maybe spend some time with family or uh, or spend some time with friends. This is actually session. 12 of our study through psalms so that means we're kind of heading towards the end and we'd like to hear from you uh, which you would like us to study next and you get bonus points if you tell us who you'd like to replace up here so maybe bible study with hans and somebody else or bible study with dan and somebody else <laughs> who else would you like to have uh, be a part of a bible study we're going to kind of go into a summer schedule uh, this week. So instead of doing three a week, we're going to get down to two a week and probably push those out on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, uh, but give us some feedback. Let us know how this is helpful, if it is helpful, and, and what else you would like us to study. Hans, how are folks doing at the Culpeper? They are doing well. Everybody is still safe and well. In fact, through all of our communities now, everybody is safe. Uh, yep. So that's good to know. And they're a little stir crazy, a little yeah. more this week yeah. than they were last week. Right. All of them are talking about the governor opening things up and wanting to know what that means for them. And right. We're still figuring that out. <laughs> right. Well, and a, a lot of our older folks uh, here in the church uh, had a real thrill Sunday when we uh, broadcast a sermon from the Davis Street <laughs> location. Uh, and we'll do that again this coming Sunday. So be sure to tune in and go back and watch uh, last Sunday's broadcast if you missed it. And we are looking for interior photographs of the church that uh, we had at Davis and East Street. It's still there. We left it in 1955. But if you have an interior photograph of the sanctuary of the church at Davis and East Street from when we were there, uh, we'd love to see that. Reach out to us and, uh, and help us find that. Or even if they had an exterior picture that included those stained glass windows right, on the right. street any, side any there. Any of that yeah. would be good. Any pictures you have, <laughs> we'd love to see them. Uh, we're having a good time uh, being, we had a good time being over there. All right, we are studying through Psalms, as I mentioned, and we've been kind of using uh, a, a graph by, by Walter Brueggemann uh, to kind of help us think through the Psalms. And we've talked about psalms of orientation that kind of talk about hey things are good in my world and then psalms of disorientation which are kind of like what we're dealing with now where, where things have been uh, shaken things are different we don't quite know which way's up and then psalms of reorientation that where god takes us to a new day where he doesn't take us back to where we were in orientation but he leads us to a new day and so mostly we've spent time on psalms of orientation and disorientation. And you might remember that last Friday we finished with uh, the 22nd Psalm, which is all disorientation. <laughs> yes. That was a tough psalm. David's life was not going well. Uh, and there was no solution to the problems. And I, and I think that's what we got to remember because we're always looking to solve the problem. David goes through Psalm 22nd. He knows his, his life is a mess. Uh, he knows there's no easy path out of it, but he, even in the midst of the mess, decides to give thanks and praise the Lord. And so that's a challenging psalm to us, even as it's a psalm of disorientation. So we told you last Friday we get you into a, a psalm that's familiar and uh, one we all love. So we're going to look at the 23rd psalm today, and I'm going to read it to you out of the King James Version, because that's, uh, that's uh, where, where this psalm really kind of shines in our English translations. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So really this psalm, uh, we get to a reorientation, but it kind of gives us the whole gamut of, right. of Brueggemann's illustration. We have orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. So, so let's talk about the orientation part of this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, mm. that, that's a great statement of orientation. Yeah. Uh, that does kind of help us uh, calibrate life and when the, the psalmist refers to us as sheep, so what more do you want as a sheep? That you have a shepherd uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that will take care of you. Uh, and we have uh, all we need. Don't have to worry about green grass. Uh, the shepherd's going to find it. Don't have to worry about what they're going to drink. The shepherd's going to get it. Don't have to worry about the enemies. The shepherd's going to take uh, care of them. Wow, that releases a lot of stress. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I think that's how we're supposed to be living, yeah. uh, living each day, understanding who the Lord is. So, so that kind of <clears throat> goes right into the Lord is my shepherd. We're, we're all there. And then he says, and I shall not want. And that's where the breakdown happens in many of our lives because we want. Mm -hmm. And I think we need, to, we need to frame that better. Really, our wanting shows some level of distrust in the shepherd mm -hmm. um, that maybe he's not going to take care of me. Maybe I don't have all that I need. And, um, and I think that's really challenging for us because in our culture, mm -hmm. the God is consumerism. Right. We are because we purchase. We are because we buy. Um, we're all struggling with that right now uh, as we think about uh, what's happening to the economy and everything. And, uh, um, and, and we got to be real mindful of that as believers, that, that we say, no, 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 we're, we're not defined by our ability to consume. We're defined by who the shepherd is. Right. And, uh, and I think we miss that sometime. Um, and it also tells us... Uh, you know, there, there's also this, this constant theme in our culture that if you have something, then I can't have it yes. because there's scarcity. There's only so much, and you got it, and I can't have it. But that's not how the Bible's written. The Bible's written in abundance. Right. Uh, the Lord has all that we need. Um, there's enough for you and me. Um, and, and I think we, I, I want to make sure we, we, we get that I shall not want peace. Uh, it talks about we trust the shepherd. Mm -hmm. And it talks about we believe that the shepherd has created an earth that is bountiful and abundant, um, and we have all that we need. And so I think that's, um, that's really important. Um, we think about scarcity, just to put it in the context of our day, uh, we think about scarcity in terms of not being in a church building. Yeah. You know, that we've we got to get back to a church building. And I think maybe God's saying, I finally see abundance in my church because now, like the New Testament, there is a church meeting in all wow. these houses. Wow. And, and what God sees as abundance, we're too often seeing as scarcity. And, and so let's, let's make sure we make good application to what it means to say the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want, because he is an abundant God. Mm -hmm. He takes care of everything uh, we need. Um, and he, he takes us to water. He ta gives us rest. He provides us with safety. Um, and, uh, and we need to kind of keep that, that idea strong in our minds. Um, verse 3 talks about restoring my soul. Um, I often talk about salvation in terms of creation, fall, redemption, restoration. That's, that's a great way in my mind to think about salvation. But we don't talk enough about restoring people's soul. No. Um, we just think we're going to just get through life in some some harsh ways but but what the shepherd's saying is is even when um when my life is in trouble he is in the process of restoring my soul so um that that's encouraging and uh and we need some soul restoration to happen yes. <laughs> in our lives and and in this time so hans pick us up with verse four well verse four begins to speak of the disorientation. And so we go into that disorient, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so even through the darkest places of life, I have no fear of the evil because, right. you know, and the shepherd is there. And right. the shepherd's got whatever the issue may be, I don't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, just like the supplies for the needs and mm -hmm. wants, he's got it. Right. And when we get to those dark places, he's got those too. And this is one of the central parts of the psalm, but it's also the central part of the gospel right. and works throughout Scripture that God is with us, the shepherd is with us. Right. And um, so often we want to read this psalm as, you know, there's this little dip here, and mm -hmm. then we get back up. <laughs> Yeah. And that's not what the psalmist is saying. Uh, um, the psalmist is saying all of these are, are phases of life. Mm -hmm. All of these are part mm -hmm. of life. And um, it's not you, uh, 
you, you try to escape from the valley of the shadow of death, you, you know he's with you right. in the valley of the shadow of death. So, uh, you know, I, th I think that's a real important um, point and idea. And the gospel is God with mm -hmm. us. That's mm -hmm. what this verse and this, this psalm is telling Which us. Which changes everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Then he get, then the psalmist switches yet again and goes from talking about God to talking to God right. as the shepherd. That relationship, you, you see that it's not just, oh, I know the shepherd and I know about him. Right. It's I know yeah, the shepherd know and he knows yep. me. Yep. And, and uh, let's make sure we're spending time on those things because uh, psalms of disorientation, we, we get broken, we get... Um, you know, broken down when we don't have a relationship with the shepherd. Yes. I, I, I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, times of crisis reveal the lack of relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's true in our human relationships. It's also true in our relationship with God. Right. There's a lot of people that know about God that right. know him. Right. Uh, and we know a lot about Hollywood actors, but may not right. know them. And that makes a big difference. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and so the, the psalmist goes through and he, he talks about knowing God as an individual talking to him rather right. than talking about him. And then he, he goes into this view of the host uh, and instead of the shepherd, we, we change views now and talk yeah. about God as the host who provides. And in the Middle Eastern world, the host is such an important mm -hmm. individual because it's up to the host not only to provide but to protect mm -hmm. and supply all of the needs of any of the guests. And so we see that take place here as the psalmist begins to discuss the host and the host not only providing, not only taking care of, but being with the right. guest, right. which is so important. Yep. And so the result of God is the good shepherd and the good host being with the psalmist is goodness, mercy, and safe dwelling in that house with right. that host, dwelling in that space with that shepherd. Right, right. Um, and, and, and the idea here uh, in our English, we don't quite get it. It's, it's not that goodness and mercy shall follow me. Uh, the Hebrew mm -hmm. is actually ha is a little more active. It, it's yes. chasing me. Right. Um, and we all need to remember that sometimes because there, there are times in all of our lives where we felt like we've kind of gotten outside yeah. Of yeah. uh, the realm of God's love, mm -hmm. or, or God's grace, or God's goodness, or God's mercy, and the psalmist says, "Hey, it's an active pursuit that the Lord is making towards us." And, and I want to make sure we all hear that today, because um, you know we we kind of joke when we get in some pastor groups about how this crisis has suddenly given us a platform to people <laughs> we've never <laughs> been around, who've never been in church buildings, mm -hmm. um, and. You know, that, that's evidence of God chasing people, mm -hmm. right? Chasing people with love and mercy. And we need, to, we need to do more of that in our own lives. You know, and that makes us feel so much better to know that God is still pursuing. Right. Even when we messed up, he's still pursuing me. He's still loving me enough to come after me. Right. And that's what the psalmist is trying to convey right. in that. And then in verse 6, mercy, we sometimes miss the true meaning in this section right. of mercy and, and the faithfulness right. that goes along with it in the, in the Hebrew word being the steadfast love mm -hmm. and the faithfulness. Yep. Yep. Uh, and the psalmist is trying to get that across to us. And follow is so significant with that faithfulness. God is right. not just following, chasing after us occasionally. It's a continuous, right. significant right. Thing. Yeah, and I think sometimes in covenant relationship, we think God loves us and our behavior meets him in the middle, mm -hmm. and that's how this thing all works. Yeah. But, but the psalmist says, no, 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 God's love comes all the way to us, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that's his covenant to us. He loves us. He right. is always extending himself to us. And we, we try to put God's love in the same context as ours, and we think God loves us right. like we love him or right. like we love that's someone else. Point. And it it's different. It's very it's different. It's very different. Yeah. <laughs> we can't um, wrap our heads around that. Right, right. I, I think one of the biggest challenges of a leader is to define reality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm sure Hans, in your situation, certainly not in mine, um, a, a church might have been interviewing you, and the reality they told you about mm -hmm. 
and the reality you experience like six months into the job were really different. Very different. And, and again, no, nobody did anything wrong. No. It's just, uh, it says how hard it is to define reality. Well, it's, it's view. Right. You know, it's right. how they view the world, right. what they were told it looked like. Right. And, and a lot of us, when we are in disorientation, when we are in the valley of the shadow of death or whatever else, what we're trying to do is act like we're still in orientation. Yes. Um, old orientation. Right. Old orientation. We, we don't want to acknowledge that something, whether it's significant in the grand scheme of things or it's just significant in our lives at that moment, has happened. And so I think one of the biggest challenges for all of us is to let God define reality in our mm -hmm. lives and say, mm -hmm. hey, th you're in disorientation. This, this isn't working. This is not normal. Sometimes <laughs> in, in the work that we do, uh, sometimes we've got to be in a room with some people and say, what you're describing is not normal. What you're describing is not the life that God has yes. for you. Right. And that's you and me defining reality. Now, that's mm -hmm. uh, that, that's always not the easiest job. <laughs> no, that sometimes <laughs> makes us very unpopular. Yeah, it doesn't lead to long careers sometimes. But, but I love how the psalmist defines reality here. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't gloss mm -hmm. over it. Mm -hmm. no, um, it's, there's it, hard parts. And so let's make sure that uh, we're not so afraid of disorientation that we're afraid to name it. Because it's only in naming it we can start to see the reorientation mm -hmm. uh, to, to life that he's calling us to. So... You know, one of the reasons we wanted to do the Psalms was to speak to the disorientation we all right. feel. Um, you know, and we've said this multiple times, and we've heard you say it. Uh, we're ten weeks without being together in mm -hmm. church. That's that's a negative. Yeah, I mean that we all feel that that we've not been able to be together. Um, th there are some positive things that have come from that. Absolutely. But, but I think right now, as you and I and others spend a lot of time trying to figure out. Uh, how we open up a, a building for church use again. And uh, while we're leading this Bible study, uh, Gary Parkinson is uh, out in our <laughs> courtyard measuring to try to figure out how we can do some things. But I think it's so important, and I've been, I've been thinking about this the last two or three weeks, how does our first Sunday not look like orientation? How does it look like reorientation? reorientation. Yeah. And, and I don't know the answer to that, so I'd, be, I'd, I'd uh, love to hear some of you all respond because... The invitation that God's given us is to not go back to March 8th, mm -hmm. but to go forward mm -hmm. on the mission that he's called us to. Yes. And, uh, and so I want to encourage us to all be thinking about that as we, as we think about this psalm. Mm -hmm. um, and then the great promise at the end of the psalm, hey, in all of this life, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Keep some perspective. That's the goal and the and the job of believers. And that's not the brick building, here. right? That, that is not three eighteen <laughs> Southwestern. No, it's uh, it's a greater greater place. So uh, let's hold on to that promise. All right, the closing questions today are really simple. What is God saying to you through this passage? Um, and then what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And and I think that's uh, sometimes we we get everywhere in the scripture except that. What did God say to me, and what am I going to do differently because of it? And so spend some time on that today. Put some comments in the section, uh, in the comment section about reorientation, about the answers to these questions, and be sure to tell us what you would like us to study next. Hans, would you close us in prayer? Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that even in the midst of our disorientation, you know what the orientation, the reorientation, and all of the rest of the parts look like. Oh, Lord, we want to be a people who turn to you for that reorientation. Give us the courage, oh, Lord, to step forward into whatever the new plan that you have for us may be. So we ask in your name and your will be done. Amen. Amen. See you on Friday. <laughs>